maximum bending stress. Two more term we introduce at this instant. One is the flexor rigidity and one is the section modulus. Flexor rigidity is nothing but the product of the angle modulus E and the moment of inertia IZ. That is the second moment of inertia about the Z axis. And the section modulus which is represented by symbol Z is given as IZ divided by Y. That is this value of Y. So if you equate the first term and the last term, in that case we have M, that is the bending moment divided by IZ, that is the moment of inertia about the Z axis is equal to N modulus divided by the radius of curvature equal to rho. So in this case the bending moment M is equal to E, that is the N modulus multiplied by IZ divided by rho, that is the radius of curvature. Naturally here if you select the value of ang modulus is a higher value and you select the IZ will be the higher value. So if you select the property as a combination of good ang modulus and the higher value of moment of inertia naturally this will imply we have a higher value of moment of resistance. So if this product will increase that is the value of ang modulus will be higher as well as IZ will be higher then we have the higher value of moment of resistance. So this is a fine wedding between the material property and the geometric property. That is if you select a property of a material that is the ang modulus and the moment of inertia for a section, in that case the value of m will be higher value. And if you select this formula here that is the bending stress term and the first term here, in that case I will get the same equation as bending stress sigma v which one is the function of y is given as minus m multiplied by y divided by i that is iz. Now this y we can write in denominator and very quickly we can calculate the bending stress which one is the function of y as minus m divided by iz divided by y that is we have bending stress which one is the function of y is minus m and we have iz by y is same as the section modulus. So you have to divide this value by z. So if we select the section modulus higher then naturally we our bending stress will be lower and this value must be less than syt divided by factor of safety then we have less stress produced and we have a higher value of factor of safety. So we must select the section that is such that we have a section modulus should be higher value. Similarly, we should select a section such that the IZ value will be higher as well as egg modulus will be higher then we have higher value of M. So it is always a good practice to increase the higher value of moment of inertia and the higher value of egg modulus. In that case, it is guaranteed that the bending stress will be lower than the limit which one is SYT. Lower the value of limit will be the higher the factor of safety and the safe is the design. Now how are we going to use the area that really matters? Now here as far as these two area are shown, both are the rectangular area. Now it is really matters here how are you going to use your cross section. So as far as the, this rectangular cross section the beam is considered is same as 20 by 40 and here is also is 40 by 20. It means that area wise both is 800. It means that the costing wise both the beam has the same cost. Let the bending moment here is same for both. So bending moment here will take equal to 10 to the power 6 Newton mm and is a positive value. Here also we have bending moment m is equal to 10 to the power 6 Newton mm. So this one is our z axis. Parallel to z axis we have b and parallel to y axis we have depth. Similarly here, we will say this is a centroid, this one is our z axis. So parallel to z axis we have b which is equal to 40 and parallel to y axis we have depth equal to 20. As far as iz is considered, iz is for rectangular section is same. But for this section we have iz will be equal to bd cube divided by 12. Here b is measured parallel to z is equal to 20. So we have 20 and depth D you have to measure parallel to y direction that equal to 40. So we have 40 cube divided by 12. 
So we'll get the value of IZ in this case is close to 1, 0, 4 times 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6.7 mm to the power 4. And in second case, we have same formula of IZ which is BD cube by 12 times B is equal to 40 and we have depth equal to 20. So we have 20 cube and this whole thing is divided by constant 12 in the case of rectangle. If you find out this value here, this value of IZ will come out to be 2, 4 times of 6, 0.7 mm to the power 4. The top fiber in the first case at a distance equal to Y, which is equal to D by 2. So in this case, we have D by 2 will be same as equal to 40 by 2, that equal to 20 mm. So clearly for this one, we have z which is given as iz divided by y iz value is same as equal to 1 0 4 times of 6.7 divided by 20 so section modulus in this case come out to be 5333 3, 3. this is mm to the power 4 divided by mm so this value will be mm cube whereas for this section here if we keep the base horizontal and the depth vertical that is a larger dimension is a horizontal and a smaller dimension is vertical so in this case we have y on the top fiber will be equal to d by 2 which is equal to 20 divided by 2 20 divided by 2 is same as equal to 10 mm so we have section modulus in this case is iz divided by y is same as equal to 266666.7 divided by 10. So clearly, if I say this value is Z1 and this value equal to Z2, we are getting this value as 2666.6 that is mm cube and is less than the value of Z1. Naturally, if the value of the Z will be higher in the first case, the bending stress will be the lower value that is what we want to prove here and we have bending stress here the maximum value of a bending stress will say because we have taken the y is equal to d by 2 is same as equal to m forget about the sign m by z and we have value of m is 10 to the power 6 and we have z is equal to 533 again 3 so this value will be come out to be 187.5 megapascal Whereas in this case, the maximum bending stress will be equal to again m by z sign temporary will neglect. We have m is same as equal to 10 to the power 6 divided by 2666.6. So maximum bending stress in this case come out to be 375 megapascal. Now this value is much higher as compared to the previous value. So it is really matter here how you use the value of iz. So this example demonstrate here, if we have a same cross section, that is a rectangular cross section, in the first case, the smaller dimension is the base and the larger dimension is a depth. So this time the depth is greater. So this time we have depth is greater than base, then we have the lower value of the sigma. And in this case, the base is greater than depth, then we have larger value. So it really matters how you select the value of I said. If you select this vertical, in that case, the, we have a lower value. So this is more steep, we can say, and this is a less steep. You can take a scale here and you can take the scale in a vertical position like this one, that is a thinner cross section and you try to bend it. If you try to bend it, it will never bend. So this is what I want to say here. So this one is a scale here. And if you have a very small cross section here, so the base is very small and depth is larger here and you try to bend this by applying the force here. So it will never bend up. But if you keep it horizontal, in that case it will bend very easily. This is exactly means that how you select your the property I said. Therefore, I, in one word I said it's a fine wedding between the, the material property and the cross section. You understand what is the meaning of fine property? Both partner must have a good quality. This one is the concept of section modulus and the flexure rigidity. So up till now we have seen here that the stresses are produced in the beams due to bending which are called as the bending stress. 
but it is also possible that sometimes if the plate or a thin wire is bent in that case the bending stress is produced either in a steel plate or in a wire so let's consider here we have a steel plate and this plate is very very thin plate of a rectangular cross section so exactly at the center we have a neutral axis so this circular plate here is bent into known radius of r and from neutral axis if we measure the curvature then it will be the rho that will be the radius of curvature so this radius of curvature will be same as the this distance which will be same as the depth divided by 2 and r is the radius of the arc so this figure represents here the hogging condition and the bending moment value you have to take as a negative as seen in this figure here the bottom fiber is in compression and the top fiber in tension as the length of the bottom fiber is going to decrease therefore it will be compression and the length of the top fiber is increased therefore it is in tension so this one is a rectangular section of width is equal to b and d of this thin plate and the maximum stress is produced on the top and bottom will be the sigma b maximum as said here on the top we have tension and the bottom we have compression but this time the value of rho is given value of rho is same as equal to this curvature that equal to r plus this distance equal to d by 2 we have radius of curvature equal to r plus d by 2 once we know the value of rho we can calculate here the maximum bending stress so maximum bending stress will be sigma b maximum is same as equal to c multiplied by e by r is c multiplied by e divided by the radius of curvature equal to rho the value of c here for top fiber and bottom fiber both are equal to d by 2 so this is the value of c which one is d by 2 and this one is also value of c because both the fiber here are equidistance from neutral axis so let's substitute here for c as d by 2 and we have eng modulus divided by radius of curvature rho in that case we can calculate the value of maximum bending stress induced in a steel plate if it is bent into circular arc so instead of a plate here we have taken this time a wire of diameter equal to d and we have bent the wire about a fixed diameter of a drum is having a radius equal to r which one is capital d by 2 this wire we assume as a circular cross section so exactly at the neutral axis here we have a radius of curvature is rho so this one is the center of curvature and we have radius of curvature is rho and we are interested to find out here the maximum value of the bending stress in the wire if you bend a wire about a fixed diameter drum of radius equal to r so d is the diameter of a wire in that case we can calculate the radius of curvature radius of curvature is this distance that is the radius of the drum plus the radius of wire that equal to lowercase r is same as equal to capital d by 2 plus the wire diameter d divided by 2 once we know the radius of curvature we can calculate here the maximum value of a bending stress the maximum value of a bending stress will occur either on the top fiber and bottom fiber as seen here the bottom fiber length has been decreased so the bottom fiber will come in compression the top fiber will come in tension because the length is increased so this distribution is symmetrical distribution again because we have a circular cross section and this situation is also a hogging situation so you have to take the value of m as a negative value now we know that the for circular section the bottom and top both are distance equal to d by 2 so this value is same as equal to c as well as this value is also equal to c and we can calculate here the maximum bending stress since here we are knowing the value of radius of curvature i will use e by radius of curvature equal to rho and multiplied by the value of c that is this value of c c is cross multiplied so maximum bending stress will be e divided by radius of curvature multiplied by c and we can put the value of c is equal to d by 2 so maximum bending stress is given as e divided by radius of curvature rho multiplied by d by 2 now here the top fiber is in tension so you have to show the arrow rightward and the bottom fiber of this circular wire so this figure and this figure is same figure only it is enlarged 
bottom fiber is in compression so you have to show it on the left foot side so you can very well calculate the stresses in the beam using the flexure formula as well as you can able to calculate the stresses in a thin wire thin plate if they are bent or they are wounded on a drum even you are able to calculate here what is the maximum strain also we know that angle modulus is same as equal to the maximum value of a bending stress divided by the strain which will be the maximum value even we can calculate here the maximum normal strain just we no want to know here what is the maximum value of a bending stress divide this value of a bending stress with the angle modulus you are able to calculate the maximum normal stress also the video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate join the course directly from your mobile the link is given here